In this short video, we're going to look at the Laplace transform of periodic functions. So suppose we have a periodic function with period t. That means the function values repeat themselves after every uh, t units of input. So what I mean to say is that if you take t and add a period to it, as the input, you'll get the same input as if you had no capital T added to it. In fact, if you add any integer multiple of capital T, you'll still get the same output. And if you get lost, just think of capital T as being two pi for the sine or cosine. And we know that the sine of T plus two pi K is the same as sine of T, where K is an integer. So let's try to find the Laplace transform just using the definition. So what we're going to do is break this integral from zero to infinity into two parts. We're going to go from zero to capital T, so to the period, and then from the capital T to infinity. And we're going to focus then on this um, second integral here the integral from t to infinity of e to the negative st times f of t dt. We're going to make a change of variables. We're going to let u equals t minus capital T, which means that du is the same as dt. And looking at the bounds, uh, certainly as t, lowercase t goes to infinity, u will also go to infinity, so the upper bound will stay infinity, and the lower bound then, um, in the lower bound then, um, when t equals uppercase t, u will equal zero. So now our new integral after the change of variables has e to the negative s in parentheses, u plus capital T, and then multiply that times f of u plus t. Now we're going to handle these two functions differently. I can use the distributive property in the exponent, and then I'd have negative s u and then negative s capital T. Well, in this integral, S and capital T are constants. So I could write that as the product E to the minus ST times E to the minus SU. And that first E to the minus ST can be factored outside of the integral. For the second function, I'm going to use the fact that I have a periodic function. So since it's periodic, f of u plus capital T is the same as f of u. So I'll just write that as f of u. So I factored out my e to the negative s capital T. I've replaced f of u plus t with just f of u. And what's left over? The integral from zero to infinity, e to the negative s u, f of u, du. u here is just the dummy variable for integration. So this would be exactly the same as saying the integral from zero to infinity, e to the negative st, f of t dt, which would be the Laplace transform. So that's the definition of the Laplace transform. So what does that say? That, okay, if I write this out, on the left-hand side, I have the Laplace transform. On the right-hand side, I have e to the negative st, times the Laplace transform. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract e to the negative st times the Laplace transform from each side and factor out the Laplace transform term. And this integral I'm not going to evaluate. I'm just going to leave it as part of my formula. So now I have a formula for the Laplace transform in terms of 1 over 1 minus e to the negative st and the integral from 0 to t of e to the negative st f of t. So it doesn't give me an individual formula for specific functions of f. 
I still need to evaluate the integral. Uh, so we can state this as a theorem then, we can use this as a formula anytime we're trying to find the Laplace transform of a periodic function. So let's do an example. So the function we're going to use is called the sawtooth function. Uh, here we're going to make it even simpler. It's going to be the unit sawtooth function, meaning that well, the sawtooth function looks like this sawtooth. If I were to actually come in here and just draw some dummy vertical lines, then it looks even more like a sawtooth. Right? Of course putting in a vertical line would not make it a function, but this is why we call it a sawtooth function. So each of these line segments then that form this uh, periodic function, they uh, have a period of one, so they repeat every unit, and the slope is one. So they just go from the x-axis with the slope of one they go up a unit one. And in this case, uh, they're actually not defined when y equals one. So the y values get arbitrarily close to one, uh, but then uh, the function is, and the integer is actually defined to be zero. So we can write the formula for uh, this particular function as just being f of t equals t. So that just means it has a, uh, if we look at the very first line segment starting at the origin, has a slope of one. Its domain is only between uh, zero and one without being one part of the, one is not part of the domain, but then it repeats itself. So we can say it has a periodic function or period of one. So f of t plus k, where k is an integer, is the same as f of t. So let's put this into our uh, Laplace transform. So I have replaced capital T uh, with one. And now I just have to work out the integral. So the f of t has been replaced with t, uh, because that's what the, its value is when we go from 0 to 1. So we'll ev evaluate this integral uh, using integration by parts. So the antiderivative of e to the negative st is negative 1 over s e to the negative st. So I have my uv portion. I'll go ahead and evaluate that, and I'll find the antiderivative in the second integral. That requires a second evaluation. And it leaves us, <clears throat> it leaves us with a rather complicated function, which we can simplify significantly. So um, what is the first thing that we did here? We factored out an s squared and uh, that left me with s over e to the s minus 1 over e to the s plus 1. And outside the brackets, I have an e to the negative s. So that suggests that we could uh, simplify this further by multiplying by e to the power of s over e to the power of s. And then there's some further simplification can be done if you write that as two fractions. And what's interesting here, and this is not always the case, but since we have such a simple function that our Laplace transform uh, actually has the uh, Laplace transform of t, which is one over s squared. And remember f of t equals t is our formula, at least for the first line segment. And then plus the second term uh, which comes from the formula that we derived. 